Hi. Today I'm going to give my Boulevard uh, oil change. It's a Suzuki Boulevard M109R or Intruder or VZ 1800 or there's that many different names for it, but that's it. And this is going to be the first service I've done. Um, it got a thousand k service at the garage. What they did there, I don't know. But this is going to be the first one that I've done. Um, so, first things, the oil. This is what was recommended. MC4ST, motorcycle four-stroke 1040, 100% POS star, fully synthetic, proudly Australian owned. Superior performance, shear free. And if you go onto the Penrite website, or they've got an app, and this is what they recommend. There's another oil um, that you can use as well, but this is the best recommendation. And this is the oil filter now. This is um, Super Cheap Auto, they do motorcycle accessories, they're getting better for it. And this is their oil filter. It's an RP138, which is the same number used in K&N, the same number used in High Flow. Um, no, use the same number 138. This oil filter, I don't know if you've seen it before, but it's worth mentioning. A lot of people use a K&N filter because they think it's good quality. Well, first time I used one of these, again, I noticed the nut on the end of it. Looks like a K&N. Um, but <clears throat> I had to look at the serial number on it, and according to the serial number, it's the same as a K&N. In fact, I researched it, and they're made in the same factory in Indonesia. Is a K&N filter, so I may as well say it's a K&N. There's very little difference. Anyway, this one's good. It's got the nut on the top, so it's easy to take off. Um, for the removal, replacement of the filter. If it's got the, the, the standard filter on, you'll need something to slacken it off. Um, putting that one on, 17mm spanner. Um, you need a 17mm socket to drain the oil and you need the oil pan. Now, this bike takes 3.6 litre and as you can see the can's 4, so 3.6, there's a wee drop left over for topping it up in case I have to. Now sliding under from the right hand side of the bike, I'm going to show you where you get to the, the what do you call it, the drain plug. So, the drain plug is under, you come under the right hand side, there's the belly pan of the engine. And there's two bolts, one there, and one there. Now why it's got two sump plugs, I do not know. I suppose it's whatever way the bike's lying. If it's on its stand, all the oil's lying to that side. And if you're on a wee slope at all, by taking off the front one and the back one, you're definitely going to get all the oil out. Now the oil filter is just up here. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's at the front of the bike up here. This is it all dirty, so that just comes off with a wrench and the new one screws back on there. So, anyway, so what I need to do is I'll slacken these off and then I'll stick the pan under to get the oil out. So I'll go and get my wrenches. So, here we go. Now, I must is rubber gloves. So, Anybody who works beside me will know prison issue. <laughs> they come in handy. Now slacking these two drain plugs off, as you can see, from the drip from that one. They're, they're slackened off. So without burning yourself, get the first one out. Doesn't matter what order you take them out in. 
and watch for the washers. So there's the first one. Stick the bolt up there. And without spilling in it, I'll move this over a wee bit and take out the second one. Again, without spilling it and without burning my hands. There we go, lovely stuff. Stick that other bolt up there. Now, I'll just leave that running away for a wee while dripping. So, how long would you leave the oil dripping from the bike? Well, the oil change says 3.6 litres or 3.8 if you're changing the oil filter. I always do the 3.8, I always change oil filter. There's no point changing oil without changing oil filter for the sake of a few bucks, I mean really. So when I do this and I put the bike on the stand and take the drain plugs out, I'll leave the bike sitting for an hour so that every piece of shit drips out of it. Not that there should be any shit in the engine, but I'll leave it for an hour anyway. And then I'll take the oil filter off um, and let that drain and clean it, put the filter on, put the drain plugs back in and then top it up with oil. So anyway, while that's draining, it's time to go and get a cup of tea. Now, I thought I would just like to add while I'm at this, um, when you're servicing your bike, you might want to do your air filter, you might want to do your spark plugs, each cylinder's got two plugs, two at this side at the back and two on the front side at the other side. Um, and when it comes to changing these, you might find you want to put maybe iridium in, something that'll last for a while so you're not having to change them every 20,000 k's. Um, platinum, something like that, you maybe get 100,000 out of them. Um, I've not done the plugs yet because I've only had the bike for four months. It's only done 5,500 k's, so no need to do them or the, oil, the air filter yet, so it's really just the engine oil. So the next service, um, when it's done about 10,000, I'll do the plugs and I'll do the air filter, so we'll have that coming up. And any other wee jobs, brakes, etc., if it needs any. But anyway, so the next job will be taking the oil filter off. We'll do that now. So these are the sump bolts. Um, the washers on them are relatively good, so I'll use them again. I don't believe in changing them all the time. Um, although some people do, and if you do, that's fine. On the end of these wee sump bolts, there's a little magnet on each one, so any filings or anything, I'll stick to the magnet instead of trying to pump through your engine. So, what I'm going to do is it stopped dripping now, so I'll put these back in, so as I can move the, the tub up to the front for doing the oil filter. So there we go, it's just... A wee drip at the front one, the back one's more or less stopped. So, I'm going to stick these in. Just move that tub up a bit. Get that back one in there. If I can find the hole, there it is. And that's that one in. Once it's in, I'll give it a tighten up. And that one, just a bit, I'll just give that a minute and let it drip a wee bit more because it's still dripping once it stops i'll get that front one in okay some plugs are back in tightened up so now we're going to take the oil filter off which is up here i've already slackened it off with the wrench so i should be able to get the rest of it off by hand there we go, oil's dripping out. The long thread. And this is, and as you can see, genuine Suzuki oil filter. So I'll just leave it sitting here until the 
oil drains out and I'll get the new one and put it on. Now, here we go with the oil filter. Every time you buy one, it should have that cover on it. If it's no good at that, then don't take it. Now, a lot of these oil filters, they come with a wee bit of grease on the o-ring for lubrication, so it's when you pour it on, it's not going to warp the rubber. But, as always, I always dip my finger in the oil and give it a little coating. Not much, just a wee bit. That'll help seating it. And remember, once you put it on, you'll get a wee bit of that oil will run down the side and it'll look like it's leaking, but it's not. It's just the stuff that I've put on there. So, the old filter's off. Just letting it drip for a minute. And the new one just screws on in its place and tightens up with the 17mm spanner. Now, there's a the housing up there. And I'm going to screw the oil filter on. It goes on there. Once you get lined up with the threads, it'll just twirl on. Until you can get it hand tight. And then once you've done that, you can give it a wee tighten. With the 17 spanner, I don't know if you can see that for the light coming in, but you give it a wee tighten up with 17 mil spanner. It's here, and that goes on the end of the thing, like that. And you don't want to crank it too much. Because really an oil filter should just be hand tight and that should be it, so yeah, you just want to own a bit. So, putting your oil in, there's the oil hole down there. So it takes 3.6 3 litres, I'm sure it is. Um, that stuff comes in a four litre can, so it's nearly all. What I'd do is I bought this jug. It's got a thousand. It's got the one litre mark and the five litre and the half a litre mark. So that is easy. Put in uh, three full ones. And there's your three litres, and then just over a half, maybe three quarters, and that'll be enough. Um, I mean, you're only going to have point point three or point four of a litre left in your can. Um, by the time you put the oil in, handy for topping up. But if you were to put a wee bit too much in, wouldn't do it much harm. But this is fully synthetic, and the reason I'm putting that in is a lot of people say it makes your gear changing smoother. I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, onwards with us. So we'll get the oil put in. This jug's handy for pouring it doing that. I'll go and do this with two hands on in case I make a mess. Well, that's it all done. Um, oil changed. I filled her up. I put in 3.6, 3.8, near enough hole. Can't it anyway. Um, and then I started her up. Um, run her for a minute. Let her sit for five minutes. Held her upright and then checked the dipstick, and it was right in the top mark. Maybe just a wee fraction above it. Just a wee bit. I'll not do much harm though. I'll just burn off any excess. So that's it done. Um, yeah, again, fully synthetic this time just to see if it makes the gears a wee bit quieter. Um, well, no quieter, but less clunky. Somebody recommended that it, that it does improve the, the gear changes a wee bit, but they weren't that bad to be quite honest. So that's it done, oil change. Um, so the next one I'll be doing the plugs and air filters, so I'll get all that in video the next time. So, so that's it, so hope that was helpful. See ya.